we're here at a very nicely cooked piece of steak. Part of this is going to go into my mouth in a second. Do you want to know how we got to this point? It didn't take us very long. This is the first in a series of shows where Father Scott and from Helotus and I, Father Pat from St. Pius, are going to <coughs> excuse me talk to you about some of the things we do to cook. As you can tell, I like to eat, and with that, I decided I want to make things the way I like it, so I like to cook too. So. We'll be sharing you some of our secrets, some of the recipes people seem to like that we make, and maybe some of our shortcuts, and you can look forward to all sorts of different recipes. So on my YouTube channel, there's already a bunch of recipes if you want to look and get a, maybe a forefront of what's coming, but this will be a little bit different with Scott and I doing it together. Scott's voice was out today, so we just decided to give not wait another month and just give you an idea of how to do a really good steak. So, if you want to learn how to do this, keep watching. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> so some people think you have to spend a lot of money on a steak. Earlier, a trip to Sam's was made in Maker's Mark Angus Beak on sale for $25. I do this a lot. People I've put it together next to a prime ribeye and people can't tell the difference. So, we're not going to put all of these. These will get saved. We're going to take one out. Put these up here. And the first thing I do is I, let me just run right away from the camera, is I rinse it in cold water. You get anything that may have been on there. Some people say, no, you want that. Some people say you don't. I read enough stuff that I finally stopped reading and I said, I am going to soak it and then dry it. Now, you can do this hours ahead of time. And as it dries, there's that, you know, dry aging, you can leave it out. And if you want to look at dry aging meat, there's all sorts of videos. We're not doing that today. We're just going to take this here. We're going to put it out. Now, since I've dried it and I've put it out, it was, it's going to be harder for the um, seasonings to stick. So one of the things that you can do is add something. Some people that will help them stick. You can sometimes add soy sauce. That's good for a tougher piece of meat. But it would add flavor to the ribeye, which we don't want to do. And I found the balsamic vinegar. I use mustard on pork. But I haven't been brave enough to try that on a nice piece of steak. But I just put the balsamic vinegar, which adds a little bit of sweetness and I think helps with the caramelization later, on one side. Rub it in. Flip it over. Do the same. Remember your hand was just on raw meat. So you have everything you touch with this hand has to get done. So. Get that done, make sure it's there. Next step is, I use garlic powder. Just, this is Bolner's, great supporters of Catholic television and I'm sure um, today's Catholic, I use Bolner's. I do a thin sprinkling of um, um, just the garlic powder. And I set that soak in a little bit. And I use a little bit of Lowry seasoning salt, just a little my family grew up all over the place. One of the places we went as kids was Lowry's Steakhouse, and this was all they put on their steaks. But the way I do them, it needs a little bit more. So I just, I usually use just salt and pepper, but because I don't want to take the time just to figure out and get the proportions and measure it out, this salt and pepper blend by um, HEB does really great. And also, if you're looking, Uncle Chris's from Bolner's also does a really good job. But it just, do a little bit, not a little bit, you cover it fairly well with this. And you want it to dry a little bit. You can pat it in a little bit, but you see that dry look that it gets? The longer it sits, that'll be there. And then the place a lot of people forget to season are the sides. You don't have to get all of it, but it sure helps if you get a little bit of it to help get the seasoning flavor in. And again, this is just salt pepper with a little bit more garlic, and that helps. If you have a, especially if you have a, you know, if you're in a hurry, or if I'm going on a trip, and I don't wanna bring all these three things, I will bring Uncle Chris's from Bowlers, which is also a great option for this. And then let that sit. Let that sit for anywhere from 30 minutes I've let it sit for hours. I've prepared it and I'll be doing that this weekend. I'll prepare my 
for some volunteers, I'll prepare the steaks beforehand. Then I will let them rest during mass so they'll get as close to room temperature as possible. I don't work for the FDA and all those people that say they have to stay at that temperature. That's not me. What I do, and I've yet to kill anybody, nobody's even really gotten sick, but as I let them sit and as close to room temperature as possible. No way. You saw me wash my hands in the beginning. Well, actually you didn't, but we'll wipe that back off and then we'll wash our hands again. This cutting board you'll not see again because I won't take the time to wash it well enough in between, but especially if you're doing a chicken, it's really good to do a plastic cutting board to start with and then go to a nicer wood one for cutting later. So we're gonna let this sit. Next I'll see you at the grill. We'll get the grill all lit up and then when that's all done, about eight minutes later, we'll have some steak. Be right back. It is time to take the meat. You see it dried out a little bit. It looks a little bit drier. See there, you can see it dried more. We're gonna take this right out to the grill. There, so I wanna get that nice sear on it. And today happens to be one of those days we had over 100 degrees, so this was really a dedication for us to get this done you hear that sear we will leave it there and going and you see oh i didn't show when we got out here it was up to 700 degrees up there and your watch will come up to there you should check your watch when you come out here it's five minutes till if we don't get smoke in the next four minutes probably two minutes we'll have to open it we'll rotate it to get the cross grid on it and with any luck there's enough fat in here that will get hot enough It'll start flaming a little bit to really help us sear the outside. But that means being patient, leaving the top down, getting the grill really warm beforehand. It's already back up to 600, and that'll give us a pretty darn good steak with something at sale at Sam's. All right, the smoke that was is starting to come out is a good sign. It tells us that it's probably gonna be a little flamey, which it is. So we'll take it, try not getting the teasing off it, flip it over, and look at how nicely that's seared. Those would make nice marks, and we'll turn it the other way next time. And that was almost let it go for the whole four minutes. So we'll let it go. Is it five till we go to about two minutes after? Well, see the smoke is still going a little bit, then it'll die down, and then it'll come back up. We'll go. I had a friend who told me once, well, I can always tell by feel, I get them perfect every time. And we're sitting at the table and they're blood red and it's like really had to chew a lot and he said i probably undercooked them i said yes which is why i spend too much money on thermometers you need a good instant read thermometer that will tell you where your steak is so you don't overcook it a really high quality steak if you overcook isn't as big of a difference like wagyu or something like that i'm not paying for that but a steak like this if you have to get it to the right temperature and it's over, you're going to, want to take it off at about 118 to 122 and cover it for five minutes. So if you're nervous, now that you have this sear going the second time, just get your instant read thermometer, stick it in. You see this, the inside is still only at 71 degrees. So it's hotter outside than it is inside the steak. So we're, we have plenty of time. Hopefully that some more next time we'll start burning, we'll flip it again and it will go up quickly. You just can't take all that time to get from there to there. It starts the heating process, but once it hits about 90, 95 degrees, it can jump those next 30 degrees in no time at all. And it will climb five degrees while we let it sit under foil. So we've let it sit for a little bit more. We don't have anything burning yet. So we're going to turn it like that. Check that side. It's doing well. Turn it like that and just cause I'm paranoid. We're going to stick it again. It's at 106. So we'll let that sit for a little bit. We have some nice flame, which will be good for it. Don't be afraid of burning your steaks. They have a good ribeye for that purpose. The fat burns nicely. It will not taste like burned. So I'm just going to flip it like this. So I'm actually just flipping this so I can get it closer to the edge to check the temperature because it's hot in there. Just 22, 23, and that shows well over, so we're done with the grill part. Uh oh, and that's why everything's always a mess. So I always turn these off and then turn the grill off just to be on the safe side. 
That steak looks like it's going to be really good. Luckily, there are only three of us here. Boy, too bad Scott couldn't So, the reason you want to do this and just not eat it, no matter how good it looks, is what's one of the main complaints people have about medium rare steak? I don't like the blood coming out. So, the steak right now while it sits is reabsorbing some of that blood so that you'll have a nice um, cut of meat. And the more expensive the meat, the less blood that will, that will come back out. But it's always nice because that way it sits, it'll reabsorb and it, it actually I think it tastes better if you let it sit. When you just take it off and start cutting at it, I don't think it tastes as good. So one way you can find out whether your meat is ready is to look for signs. One of them could be the dog waiting for her part. So Gabby's also, see she's looking for a treat, she's looking for me to spill some. As you know, it would happen that every once in a while, by mistake, food falls and she's always there ready to get her part. So you look, you can see the blood on the top and how good that looks. It's a good piece of meat. You don't really have to worry about cutting it against the grain like you do with like skirt state and things like that. Just cut down the middle, you saw how easy that was. Nice and red in the middle, you see no blood comes out. Take this and tell me what you think. So, it doesn't take long. Just get the seasonings right. And the one thing, oh, I took them away so you wouldn't see it, but if you get back and you see that a lot of the seasoning came off, there's no reason that you can't put a little bit more on the top of it. Take a point. So if you take it and you look and you go, well, a lot of the seasoning came off. There's no reason that is before you put it under the foil, you just can't put a little bit more seasoning on it. And that brings a lot of more of it out. You have to like your seasoning to do that. Hold on, you try. Let me just give you a little bit of seasoning. There you go. And see how that then makes it pop for you. Mm-hmm. So. Mm. Really good. I usually leave them there so I don't forget, but because I was trying to clean up so it looked nice here. So, that's a quick way to do a steak. We have lots more that we're gonna cook. I think salmon might be next. Beer bread could be next. Scott and I have different, Tyler Scott and I have different ways of doing salmon, so we might show you our different approaches. I have quite a few ways I do it, but one of mine, again, is really easy, like this was. But remember, if you wanna save mixing all the stuff, Uncle Chris's from Bowlers is really great. They're not a sponsor. I just, they're local and they're very good to the church. So, have a great day and let me know how the steak went. And I'm supposed to say, because I did this on the one for YouTube, happy holy eats.